I'm Mickey at TikTok for all 51 episodes of Digimon Tamers, and it's time to talk about episode 41, Homeward Bound. The race is on for Rika, Renamon, and Impmon to get back to the Ark so that they could go back to the human world with everybody else, and it's not looking like they have enough time. And it's made even worse when Takato isn't able to get into the Ark either, as he's waiting for her. But thankfully, Gilmon is really good at making friends, and makes friends with the Ark, asking the Ark to stop moving, and it listens. <laughs> What? What's going on? What on earth's happening? Why did the Ark stop? Turns out the Ark is made with the same AI that created the Digimon, so in a way it's kind of like a Digimon itself. And after everything seems to be going well, they all get into the Ark, everything is great, it turns out they're not the only ones who got into the Ark, because Marine Angemon is in Kenta's pocket. He receives his own Digivice, he is a tamer himself now. Guys? <laughs> huh? A Digivice? <laughs> wow, hello, hello! Ah, Marine Angemon? I get it, you're my tamer. I mean my partner! <laughs> Everything seems great as they make it back to the human world and everyone's reunited with their families. Except for Jerry. Jerry, who's already struggling with so much, doesn't have her parents there to pick her up. She's all alone. I just found Jerry's parents. They're staying with relatives in East Matsumoto. So when will they be here? That's the thing. They won't. Huh? You see, her father said she left on her own so she can come back on her own. Oh. And we're seeing it in her face throughout this entire episode. This is more than just a sadness from Leomon. Something more is going on with her. Takato tries to be kind and be the one to bring her home to her family. And as he's doing so, he confesses his feelings for her. You know, Jerry, I've always wanted to tell you, you're the nicest girl I've ever met. I think... Uh... I mean, you always talk to me and stuff when no one else would. And it may sound silly, but sometimes I'd imagine that you might kind of like me. The way that I like you. Well, I mean, it's not like I think about you all the time, because I do. But things are so far gone with her that she's not speaking at all. Togato has no way to tell if she's even listening. And after they've made it back, the arc kind of disintegrates. It's gone, so Gilmon and Takato's new friend is gone. And that's not all the bad news, because the chaos has come through to the human world. This fight is far from over, because of course we still have 10 episodes left to go. This is getting so close to the ending. If you're enjoying this, be sure to hit that follow button to continue this Digimon adventure with me, and I'll see you next time. I'm Mickey at TikTok for all 51 episodes of Digimon Tamers, and it's time to talk about episode 42, Reunion. Everyone's back to the human world, which means most of the kids, at least, are with their families. Takato's still making his way back because he was on his adventure with Jerry, but everyone else gets to actually spend some chill time at home. Even Ryo, who we get to see interact with his dad a little bit, and get to see a little bit of Monodramon's personality, which is much closer to Gilmon than it is to Cyberdramon. And it's not just the Tamers who decide to go to their homes, it's Impmon. Impmon goes to the home of the two Tamers he once had, and there's a note for him there. This doesn't go anywhere in this episode, but it's coming up in the next one. Amongst the great interactions between the Tamers and their parents is, of course, Rika and her mother. Rika's mom gives her a new shirt, and it's basically the exact same one she's been wearing the entire series so far, except it's no longer a broken heart. It is a full heart. And more than that, her mom is wearing a pink version of the exact same shirt. Rika accepts this gift and puts it on as much as she's been against symbols like hearts in the past. Her and her mother are really starting to connect. And what I love even more than just the Rika and her mom connecting moment is right after that when Rika leaves and it's her mom asking Rika's grandmother like have I done the right thing mom I think you did she would have gone anyway but now she goes knowing that you love her I know I know but do you think that love is enough to keep her safe Mm -hmm. And just the idea that she's so uncertain but still trying her best makes it all the sweeter. But it's not all sweetness with the families because Jerry is with her family and getting more terrifying. What are you doing? How better now? How better now? <coughs> Jerry, let go of him, okay? Jerry? So I'm also going to give a nice little palate cleanser of cuteness with Lopmon just being so tired. That's why I don't want to go to bed yet! But... I do. No, you never want to go to bed! Oh, Mom and I... 
so exhausted. But a big thing here is a chunk of Japan is being cordoned off. There is a military occupation going on that is trying to take on the D-Reaper. And as the military makes contact, we learn that the D-Reaper has taken on new forms. The three main tamers have of course decided on their own that they can't just sit around at home. They have to go to where the action is. They have to stop the D-Reaper. And each one shows up on their own, not having any thought toward calling the other ones and just happy to see them all there. This, just like the episode right before they went to the digital world, is a nice chill one more about the family dynamics than about getting to the action or anything like that. But now uh, things are about to go down. Be sure to hit that follow button to continue this Digimon adventure with me and I will see you next time. I'm Mickey at TikTok for all 51 episodes of Digimon Tamers and it's time to talk about episode 43. Beelzemon's big day. And damn right it's a big day for him. This is one of those episodes where as soon as I started this series I couldn't wait to get back to this one. But we're leaving all the Imon Beelzemon stuff to the side for a moment as we talk about the other things going on here. Such as the fact that Gilmon finally got some Gilmon bread. We start this one right away just being creepy as hell. In these last bunch of episodes, this show is going much more into the horror. <laughs> we learn that while the D-Reaper has been focusing attacks around the Hypnos building, it has actually been avoiding the park. This is kind of explained when Shibumi shows up to talk to the monster makers. Digimon aren't the only beings that have evolved. It seems the D-Reaper thinks mankind has developed far beyond its allotted space as well. When the kids go and try to take on just one little piece of the D-Reaper in one of these smaller forms, they learn that it actually has the ability to replicate their Digimon's moves. And they're getting their asses kicked pretty bad. Oh, and it turns out while they're in the human world, they can't actually bio-merge, which means they can't become Mega, which is going to be a bit of a hindrance in the fight. But let's talk about the main thing going on here. Mon's story as he goes to find Aie and Mako. We start off in a way that is already so cute that it was breaking me immediately, where he has the note left for him that has a picture of his face on it so he knows it's for him, but he can't read and he's so desperate to get any human to help him, just begging for their help, but they won't, they're afraid of him, until Henry's martial arts teacher comes over and not only reads the note saying where Aie and Mako are, but he tells Mon some great advice that it's not about what you look like, it's about what's inside. Impmon goes on this big journey, doubtful that he'll ever find his tamers, but he does it, he finds them, he is reunited with them for the first time in the series, that isn't just a flashback. And they are unbelievably grateful to see him. Not only are they grateful, they think they are to blame. They're so apologetic for all the time he's been gone, thinking it's because they were too awful to him. It's because of all our fighting that you left, isn't it? That's why we decided to stop fighting and share so that way you'd never leave again. We're so sorry, Yukmon. <laughs> Will you forgive us? Pretty please, Yukmon. Forgive you? Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> and this is so nice, this is so sweet, and it just gets even better when the kids turn on the TV to the news and Impmon sees the Tamers are in trouble and without hesitation says he has to go to help them because they are his friends. He promises he'll be back, but he doesn't leave before one, being given a toy gun to help him with this fight, and two, being told they love him, and he says it back. This love is all he needs to become Beelzemon the right way, to become the most powerful version of himself he's ever been. Even this toy gun becomes a real gun, turning him into Beelzemon blast mode. He even gets wings so he could fly to save the day. He is like this dark angel figure at this point, and it is such an amazing transformation from the Impmon we saw at the beginning of the series to here, where it's all about friendship, it's about him feeling this love, it's about him trying to save people. And even when he's not accepted at first, when he comes to save the day, he still says he's gonna do it. But I don't give a dirty handkerchief if you believe me or not, because my partners believe in me. You can blast all the bad guys with it. We sure love you. And I'm doing this one for them. Impmon has one of the best character arcs in this entire series, and it's getting to the end now. It, this is one of the biggest moments from it. I absolutely love it. It's beautiful. This episode is so great. All right, but that is it for this episode of Digimon Tamers. Be sure to hit that follow button to continue this Digimon adventure with me, and I will see you next time.
I'm at Kid TikTok for all 51 episodes of Digimon Tamers, and it's time to talk about episode 44, The Messenger. We get a good chunk of this episode that's delivered in a different way than I think any other Digimon series has ever done. And that's that a lot of these scenes are actually news reports. We are seeing what the news is showing as the rest of the world is learning about everything going on in Japan right now. This is showing us various clips of the D-Reaper and even showing us one of the monster makers explaining Digimon a little bit better. The Digimon's ability to evolve comes from their relationship with children. Which makes sense, of course, because children's minds are rich in imagination. Digimon feed off this creativity to become smarter and stronger. So it's unlikely Digimon would want to harm our world. The Red Mass and beings around it are actually part of an old cleanup program called D-Reaper, which somehow also managed to evolve. Jerry continues to be creepy. What is this chaotic world? These creatures mindlessly act on their own, but there is no value in the one. Only pain and doubt outside the collective. And Imon finds Calamon and is a little bit of his old self just kind of being a jackass to Calamon, but at the same time he is legitimately worried about Jerry. And we have the Tamers having a meal with their parents, everyone at Rika's house, and it's again just a really sweet moment. And it ends so fantastically when one of the Digivices lights up and the Tamers know they have to go. The parents seem to all be in agreement that they don't want the children to go, but know they have to and won't stop them. It's all great and showing just how much these parents believe in their children. And Yamaki seems to be being contacted by the dead when the Ark contacts him. It's good to see Gilmon's friend is still alive somewhere, somehow. But the big thing in this episode is of course Alice and her Digimon Dobermon. Dobermon has been sent by the Sovereign to give the Digimon Tamers the ability to biomerge in the human world. It just unfortunately means sacrificing himself in order for this to be able to work. And Dobermon even delivers the news that the Sovereign are still fighting the D-Reaper over on the digital world side of things. Things. This is a two-fronted war going on right now that the Tamers aren't alone in fighting. A fun fact with Dobermon's design is that it is actually the winning submission to a fan creating their own Digimon contest. And there's also some fun stuff to get into with Alice, but it involves things with the next episode, so I'm going to hold off until then. So before anyone says in the comments any of the fan theories with Alice, I'm covering it in the next one. But that's it for me with this one. If you're enjoying this, be sure to hit that follow button to continue this Digimon adventure with me, and I will see you next time. I make a TikTok for all 51 episodes of Digimon Tamers, and it's time to talk about episode 45, The D-Reaper's Disguise. And first up, as promised, the Alice theory. Is Alice dead? Now, the biggest point to this theory actually comes from the creator of the series himself, where seemingly he says that he didn't initially imagine Alice as dead, but upon hearing the Japanese voice actor's performance when saying, I'm sorry, Alice. He thought there was so much sadness in there that it really made sense that maybe Alice is dead. Some people have also said that the way that Dobermon's like ghostly form is circling around Alice could be a sign for this as well. But there's absolutely nothing concrete saying either way. It is an interesting reading though to think that maybe this is a character brought back from the dead just for this message. All the Tamers get to bio-merge all at once, but not before having a quick internal dialogue about their feelings on fighting and specifically this fight against the D-Reaper. Fighting for a purpose is different than just fighting to fight this is something i have to do something only terriermon my friends and i can do i don't know if i want to fight at all seeing all the pain it's caused i mean look at jerry but this isn't really about fighting it's about having the strength to do what needs to be done to save the world the fate of not one but two worlds rests on our shoulders but I know I can do it as long as I have my friend, all my friends by my side. Nothing's gonna tear us apart, nothing. But they're not the only ones ready to get in on this because it looks like all the other Digimon Tamers that we've seen throughout have been seeing this on the news and think it is time to fight. Thankfully, Susie's staying behind, but Lopmon is ready to be Antilamon again and kick some butt. That's not Lopmon, that's Antilamon. She'd say hi, but she's busy saving the world and stuff. Okay. We hear a little bit more about the Ark and Yamaki's idea to try to contact it some more, but we still have to hold off before we see where that's going. And then finally, there's probably the most important thing that happens in this episode, the reveal that Jerry has actually been taken over by the D-Reaver. Not the most shocking with how creepy she's been acting throughout this, but this is the first time it's explicit. Not only that, but she's speaking for the D-Reaper. She's basically its voice, its vessel in here. And the D-Reaper explains that the reason it took over Jerry is to try to understand humans, the people who created the Digimon. Those emotions are part of the reason humans are to be eliminated. You'd sacrifice yourself for Jerry, would you not? Your feelings of concern and compassion do nothing but make you weak. 
And the D-Reaper has decided humans don't deserve to live because of their emotions. When the D-Reaper took over Jerry, she was at a point where she was completely losing herself to her negative emotions. So the idea that the D-Reaper took her over and was like, oh no, emotions are messed up, no one should live, kind of checks out in a really dark way. And while Takato's inside the D-Reaper talking to Jerry, we have Impmon and Calamon outside of it, with Calamon feeling a kind of pull to go inside, presumably to help Jerry, and Impmon trying to stop him because he cares about Calamon. Calamon is his friend, he doesn't want Calamon to be hurt. Wow, Impmon, I didn't know you cared. Surprised me too. How bad? Impmon makes me happy in these episodes. But that's it for this episode. If you want to continue this Digimon adventure with me, be sure to hit that follow button, and I'll see you next time. I'm making it TikTok for all 51 episodes of Digimon Tamers, and it's time to talk about episode 46. When is Amon just Amon? A question we get the answer to immediately when we find out that just Amon is actually Monodramon and Rio Bio merged. And there's a little bit of new D-Reaper stuff to get into here. First of all, there's the fact that there's only one D-Reaper consciousness. Everything that comes off of it is connected by these cords, and even the different versions in the digital world and human world are all one big thing. And this is potentially great news, because it means if the Digimon Tamers could destroy the consciousness, it destroys it everywhere. The other news we get is that the D-Reaper version of Jerry that is kind of just messing with Takato's head through this episode isn't actually Jerry at all. Jerry is being held somewhere else in her own glass bubble of emotion. But thankfully, Kalamon and Beelzemon are on their way to save her. Unluckily, Beelzemon is captured, and who's to say if he can save her? But Kalamon's able to get into her bubble, and this is an important moment, because when the bubble opens up is when he says that they love her. Jerry, if you only knew We get a little bit more of this too, when Marine Angemon's attacks are all little hearts, and they seem to be terrifying the D-Reaper version of Jerry. While the D-Reaper talks so much crap about emotions and how they're awful, it really seems like the strong positive ones, like love, are actually a weapon against it. And along with the fact that Marine Angemon got to be a little bit of a hero here, all of the side tamers got to be heroes here. We had that moment for Marine Angemon, and then Kazu and Antilamon each had little moments saving Justamon. This is just going to show that even the tamers who aren't getting the most attention are incredibly important to the entire thing. Even without seeing the military presence in this episode, this is looking more and more like a war zone. Just seeing all the destruction in the empty streets, and the way all the tamers regroup back to a home base and just kind of talk about the fact that they've lost more people. Kalamon and Beelzemon have disappeared! They're gone! Wait, what do you mean they disappeared? Where? Into the big red ball! We rescue two, we lose two more figures. The tamers are in the middle of a war with this giant beast and they don't know how to stop it. And there's just five episodes left to figure it out. And Alice apparently had a tiny appearance in this episode and it's even more fuel for the Alice is dead theory that she just disappears. I've completely forgot that this moment happens and that's why I didn't mention it in the last one. But that's it for this episode of Digimon Tamers. Be sure to hit that follow button so you can continue this Digimon adventure with me and I will see you next time. I'm Mickey TikTok for all 51 episodes of Digimon Tamers and I am down to the final five. It's time to talk about episode 47, His Kingdom for a Horse. This episode's all about Jerry's sadness and her relationship to her family. We get a lot, even in the opening minutes, where Jerry's memories of her mother's passing are turned into a nightmare. Running away from destiny! And as all this is happening, we're seeing the D-Reaper grow. The worse she feels, the stronger it gets. And I think that says a lot about how Beelzemon's being kept, just hung there, forced within Jerry's view at all times. Beelzemon is a reminder of everything horrible that happened, about the death of Leomon, and she's forced to just sit there and stare at him. And I think as we get more and more into this story about Jerry and her sadness really being caused by her mother's death, it explains a lot about Leomon's existence in this series. Leomon's death is incredibly tragic, but I think it serves more a function of of being a metaphorical version of her mother's death, then acting as its own thing. In having Leomon stand in as her mother here, we're getting to see a more brutal version of that death and how that really affects her. But even more so than us connecting with everything going on with Jerry in this episode, it's about everybody else realizing exactly what's going on with Jerry in this episode. The other tamers are getting a better idea of exactly what her emotional state has been for a while. And even her dad is realizing maybe he's been screwing this up pretty bad. She has to learn to take responsibility for her actions. I'm doing this for her own good. If she doesn't see the consequences of her actions, she'll never learn. 
now I see the consequences of my actions. It seems his intent was potentially good, but his tough love to make her a stronger approach really didn't work out. And apart from all the Jerry stuff, we have the birth of Grani, which becomes incredibly important because they're taking on a much larger version of the Reaper in this one. This beautiful beast is solid chrome digizoid, the middle of the digital world. She's as solid as a tank. Grani is Gallant Mon's flying steed, and as mentioned in the episode, is named after a mythical warhorse. Grani belonged to Siegfried, Sigurd, Sigur, all these different names that come up for this Germanic, Norse mythological figure. Honestly, this mythology isn't my expertise so I'm not sure if these different names are like different translations or if it's like the same myth was being retold in different regions and each region had their own name for the figure but the essentials here are that this warrior was a dragon slayer and that Odin helped him pick out this horse I'm kind of picturing that car salesman meme with Odin as the car salesman being like you could slay so many dragons with this horse but that's it for this episode be sure to hit that follow button to continue this Digimon adventure with me and I will see you next time I'm making a TikTok for all 51 episodes of Digimon Tamers and we're into the final four it's time to talk about episode 48 shadow of the beast king first of all touching on the fact that i brought up last time that beelzemon seems to be hung in front of jerry in order to cause her more despair because of course jerry's despair is giving the d reaper even more power but what happens in this episode is beelzemon wakes up and is immediately sent further away from jerry and then as he starts to break free is dispelled from this ball entirely i think especially thanks to calamon's cheerleading beelzemon is starting to become a figure of hope and the d reaper can sense this can sense that Jerry is starting to fight a little bit just a, just a tiny bit because she's still struggling so much but the D Reaper doesn't want to risk that whatsoever so the moment Beelzemon isn't a figure of despair he has to go before things really start popping off in this episode we see some camera footage that Grani was able to get while in the digital world and how destroyed it is we learned that the digital world is 40% destroyed it could be gone pretty damn soon and on the human world side of things we learned that the D Reaper isn't just in Japan, it's all over the world, destroying everything. This isn't just a localized incident, this is both worlds are about to be fully destroyed. All the kids go into battle one more time, and all the monster makers and the Hypnos are able to actually connect to the D Reaper and see through the D Reaper's eyes. Using the D Reaper's eyes, they could go past the view of all the Digimon and see the kids inside of them. None of the adults had realized before this moment that this was actually the kids fighting, not just the kids being around as their Digimon did the fighting. And more than this, this is being broadcasted all over the place, so everybody's seeing that it is these children fighting this war. But then, the real good stuff. Beelzemon trying to save Jerry. Obviously, because I've been all about Beelzemon these past few episodes, yes, this is fantastic. It's especially great how upset he is over his his gun being destroyed, not because they destroyed his gun, but because it belonged to one of his tamers. But when Grani is tough enough to be able to destroy this big bubble around Jerry's smaller bubble, Beelzemon comes in to try to get her out. And this is the big climax of the episode. While none of his attacks are able to break through, he kind of summons some data he absorbed from Leomon and uses the Fist of the Beast King attack. And here I want to make an argument that it has nothing to do with any power from this attack that is able to destroy this small section of the bubble. It is the way it made Jerry feel. It is the hope. It is the fact that it made her feel like Leomon was still around. It is Jerry's feelings of love that put this hole in the bubble, not necessarily the power of the attack. But of course, when the bubble is broken, she is actually looking at Beelzemon's face, and it's hard to parse the fact that she is getting all these good feelings, but it's Beelzemon who killed Leomon. So she's still paralyzed by this sadness and can't actually reach out to leave. And we end the episode with Beelzemon taking a pretty bad hit and looking like he might fall to his death. <laughs> Jerry, just let me save you! I need to save you! Jerry! Things are getting intense, but that is it for this episode. Be sure to hit that follow button to continue this Digimon adventure with me, and I will see you next time. I'm making a TikTok for all 51 episodes of Digimon Tamers, and it's down to the final three. It's time to talk about episode 49, D-Reaper's Feast. Picking up where the last one left off, thankfully, Beelzemon is saved by Grani. And again, we're just seeing how much the D-Reaper is truly seeing Beelzemon as a threat now, with how it was trying to prevent Gallantmon or anyone else from being able to save him. But with all of this that just went on, 
one, Jerry is feeling worse than ever, especially when she's kind of like emotionally attacked by the D-Reaper version of herself talking in her own voice. I can't take this anymore. It's curious why emotions ever evolved. Such an obstruction to logic, an evolutionary step backward. What you call compassion only bonds you to others who can make you weak. Stop it! Stop talking in my voice! This is enough to allow the D-Reaper to grow to its most powerful form, I'm pretty sure. I don't think there's another one after this. And between this evolution and the military dropping a bunch of devices into it, the Tamers end up making a tactical retreat in order to hopefully keep themselves safe, at least. And I think this is where we get to the most shocking point of the episode, the one week later subtitle. The fact that we now know Jerry has been stuck in this bubble for a whole week where nobody's been able to do anything to stop her when she's getting to her work. It's her fault! Everything is all Jerry's fault! If Jerry wasn't around anymore, no more bad stuff would happen! Nobody else would ever get hurt, especially not Takato! Jerry, please! You've got us snap out of this! And here's where we get Kalamon trying his best to be helpful, but probably saying some of the worst things to say to somebody just feeling this upset. Jerry, you've got to at least try to feel better. If you keep getting down on yourself, everything's only gonna get worse. This isn't your fault, you know, it's the D-Reaper. But it picked me, didn't it? Yourself's just feeling sorry. You gotta look on the bright side of things, Jerry. Think about all the good stuff in your life, like great friends like me. Don't you wanna be happy again? When someone's feeling incredibly depressed, just telling them to be happy is never gonna be helpful. For something on a bit of the lighter side, here's a quick thing from Renamon. So, Renamon, you're a girl, right? Actually, Digimon aren't divided into genders. And I could be completely wrong on this, but my personal reading on this scene is not that Renamon's necessarily talking about gender as in like a gender expression, but about sex. That she's making the point that Digimon aren't male or female, but I think with some of the Digimon we see throughout all these series, they do have some degree of at least a gender presentation. Though, of course, bringing up other series, there's always the little asterisk there that anything said in one of these series is not necessarily fully canon to the other ones, they are their own discrete things for the most part. But things with the D-Reaper are getting even worse, all the different sections of it from across the world are all connecting once again and actually heating up the entire Earth, basically just causing a faster version of global warming. But Henry's given a red card by Shibumi that is supposed to be able to help them and all the Tamers head back into battle. There's just two episodes left to go, so this is gonna be the final battle of this war. And if you're interested in hearing about those last two episodes, be sure to hit that follow button and continue this Digimon adventure with me. I'll see you next time. I'm Mickey TikTok for all 51 episodes of Digimon Tamers, and it's time to talk about the penultimate episode. Episode 50, Jerry Fights Back. This episode is the beginning of the final battle between the Digimon Tamers and the D-Reaper, and starts off so hopeful. When we become Sukuyumon, everything seems possible. Do you know what I mean, Renamon? Always, Rika. The three main Tamers and Ryo all show up for a little group huddle to talk about the red card that Shibumi gave Henry that's going to allow them to go into the D-Reaper's bubble without unbio merging which is the setup for what I think is the funniest use of the cards in this entire series. The card flying around through all their digivices to digimodify all of them at once. And I kind of love this chat that all the tamers have before the battle starts about how sure it seems like they've changed but in the end they really are the same on the inside. They've grown from everything they've been through but they're still the same people. Think about it. I mean, here we all are, trying to save Jerry. In some ways, we've changed a lot. In other ways, we haven't changed at all. Look at Rika. She used to just want to fight with us. Now she's tired of fighting, but she still likes to argue. But more importantly, as the title mentions, this is the episode where Jerry is finally fighting back. She is finally starting to come out of this. She is finally starting to have hope and talk about her destiny, not as being destined to be alone, destined to be sad, but of all the good she could do, of all the good any people can do, that you could change your destiny at any point to a more hopeful one. Every one of us has a destiny that's different and that's special. Isn't that right? Thank you, Ryuma. You can't delete even one of us without deleting something that the whole world needs. 
Every one of us has something important to do. And I think it's at least sort of fitting that she finally came to this conclusion when Calamon was finally in trouble. It was her needing to help Calamon that snapped her out of it, not her just being told to help herself. You're just the greatest, Hitmon. We saw you. You were wonderful. <laughs> You're just trying to make me feel better. I was totally useless out there. While it's still incredibly ambiguous, it is clear that Henry's dad did something to Terrier Mon. Something for Operation Doodlebug, as all the adults are calling it, that is going to be bad. But it looks like we're waiting until the next one to find out exactly what that is. And Gallimon goes to attempt to save Jerry, but is stopped by Jerry's giant monster face coming out of the D-Reaper. Because we just need a few more horrifying images of Jerry. But thankfully, Granny comes in to save the day once again, this time fusing with Gallimon to make Gallimon on crimson mode. Clearly this show is teaching us the benefit of befriending all vehicles you ever ride in. But that's it for this episode Digimon Tamers. If you've enjoyed be sure to hit that follow button to finish this Digimon adventure with me and I'll see you next time. I'm Mickey at TikTok for all 51 episodes of Digimon Tamers and this is it. This is the last one. This is episode 51, Such Sweet Sorrow. The final battle has essentially been split into two sides where Gallantmon's main mission is to save Jerry and the rest of them are trying to stop the D-Reaper once and for all. And first I'm gonna talk about the rest of them defeating the D-Reaper and the thing I have the most mixed feelings about in this episode. The way Justamon attempts to defeat this part of the D-Reaper is by asking Rika and Sequoiamon for absolutely all of their power in order to do one big blast against it. My body, my soul, my mind, I now send to you. All the strength within my heart, my spirit to you, I now freely give. Rio, hold on to something. On one hand, Rika's whole story is about going from somebody who's interested only in power in themselves to someone who's full of compassion. She becomes someone more interested in helping others than just getting into fights. And in this way, her giving up all the power she has to kind of cut herself out of this fight is the biggest show of this. On the other hand, this is a character who's been shown to be really tough and self-reliant for the entire series, who as the series goes on, grows more and more and more feminine until finally she has to give up all of her power to a man to do the final battle. And making this more complicated is of course the knowledge that this came out 20 years ago which was a different time as much as it doesn't seem like that long ago and it was made in Japan which is an incredibly different culture than my own. So with all this in mind it's hard to fully hold all this against the show but it is something at least on my mind with it. But even this attack from Justamon isn't enough and what actually defeats the D-Reaper is Mega Gargomon going into this vortex and spinning around so much using the Juggernaut in order to reverse the flow of this whole thing, both sucking the D-Reaper down into this hole and unevolving it to the point that it should be basically nothing. And connected to this is the fact that Henry's father put the Juggernaut system into Terriermon. This is how he's able to do this. That is what Operation Doodlebug has been. Over on the Gallimon side of things, he is fighting the most monstrous version of Jerry. And in a sense, this is basically the battle of hope and dreams versus despair and destruction. Jerry's own hope is enough to be able to break her cage, and they are able to save her. Neomon, if you can hear me, I finally understand what you said about destiny. The power to change our lives lies in ourselves! And everyone gets free of this thanks to Marine Angemon. And then as everybody is chilling out outside, enjoying the fact that they won, Ipmon shows up with his tamers so they could meet everybody, which is an absolutely fantastic end to both Ipmon and Jerry's stories. I'm so glad you're all right. You have to believe me. I never wanted anyone to get hurt. Jerry, will you, um, what I mean is, could you ever forgive me? Of course. <laughs> But here Henry's dad shows up and delivers the awful news that doing this to Terriermon has meant all the Digimon are going to be going back to the digital world. They all de-digivolve into in training level and this is kind of the funniest thing to me. Marine Angemon doesn't. Like Calamon doesn't either but it kind of makes sense because Calamon kind of only exists as Calamon. But Marine Angemon it's like they decided because he's already so tiny he doesn't have to do anything. But this is it. After this huge battle it's over and they have to immediately say goodbye. Their Digimon are all gone, seemingly forever. 
That is until sometime later, when there's a digi-gnome in the human world. Takato stumbles upon the gateway back to the digital world. Actually, scratch that. I think I'm gonna keep that promise after all. Because of course the Digimon are representations of dreams. As long as these children have belief, there will always be a possibility to go back to connect to these Digimon. While I'm done going episode by episode, I might cover a couple more, more generalized Digimon Tamers things in the future. I'm kind of undecided and it definitely won't be right away after going through so many of these so quickly. So yeah, if you enjoyed and if you've watched all 51 of these, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time.